Brad White desperately needs your help. Please do whatever you can by sending him money and your unquestioning support as much as you can, as soon as you can, and as often as you can. Okay, in all seriousness, let's take a good hard look at the so-called ministry of Todd White. Lifestyle Christianity is the name of the ministry that Todd White started in 2014. Shortly after he got it started in 2016, Tom Rutolo joined with him. He had the thing called Power and Love. And then in 2017, they announced plans to buy the uh, remains of a giant megachurch in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Hey, we have some exciting news for you. We have worked out an agreement with Harvest Church that works well with both the church and with Lifestyle Christianity. We've been able to put down a significant deposit on the building towards the overall goal of $14.5 million. This gives us another six months to continue raising the $11.5 million needed to completely pay off the center. So according to this video, in 2017, they had raised about $3 million towards the $14.5 million needed. So they needed to raise another $11.5 million to buy this kind of a dinosaur of a church building or a facility that was left over from a failed megachurch. Six months to continue raising the $11.5 million needed to completely pay off the center. So on December 5th of 2017, Todd White told everybody that in six months, if they raise the $11.5 million, the entire facility will be paid off. This means that we can now begin using the facility, which includes two Power and Love events in both January and April. We'll also begin setting up offices for our staff, and we're making plans now for the training center, opening in the fall of 2018. If you haven't yet given towards the project, we encourage you to ask the Lord how He would have you partner with us to help make this training center possible for thousands of students in the years to come. Thank Thank you again for praying for us, standing with us, and believing with us to see this God-sized vision come to pass. Bless you guys. We love you. Todd White assured everybody that this giant complex of buildings was supposed to be purchased by him and by his organization because Sean Boltz, the smartphone prophet, told him so. We are now in a place where we need $19 million. Just so you know, this video was in August of 2017 when they started with the need of $19 million, and the previous video was in December of that year where they had whittled it down to $11.5 million. And I'm asking you to help and come partner with us. I would like to not have bills each month to do this except for maintenance bills. And the prophecy that we had from an amazing man that I'm really close with, his name is Sean Boltz. He prophesied that a miracle gift was coming and that a campus was going to come. And this campus was going to be multiple buildings on the site. And he saw the banner over the campus being, just be Jesus, just be love. I knew that this is what God wanted to do before I came here. He told me he was going to do it. When Sean brought that word, I was so touched because it was exactly what was in my heart. And this is the word that he gave. The banner which said, um, just be Jesus, just be love. And I felt like God was saying over your team that he's bringing the dream team around you. And I felt like God said, there's land for you, and it's not small. There's multiple buildings on the land, and it will be bigger than you need when it comes. And it's not 10 years out, it's very soon. And God said, I can trust on this team. And God said, I can trust on this team. So I'm going to allow these people's hearts to open, to release the gifts. But the benefactor's coming alongside of you guys. So we pray, God, even as you're, you're giving a prophetic word today about it, I pray that there would be some signs and some tangible stepping towards this in this next season, where you even speak about it until it comes, in Jesus' name. So in 2017, Todd White needed $19 million. He got a bunch of money right away, so he only needed $11.5 million. And within six months, they would pay that off. God told them so. They would be debt-free. That was the story. Let's see what he's saying now in January of 2022. Todd White at Lifestyle Christianity. As you guys know, we're doing a campaign called Expand 22. Unfortunately, for the beginning of this campaign, I had an issue come up with my heart. Um, I haven't been here at the training center. I haven't been able to preach like I want to. I haven't been able to speak like I want to. I'm actually on 90 days of 
bed rest. Well, medical rest, the doctor said. Okay, a couple of things I need to point out. One, it looks like Todd White ate Todd White. Number two, the prophetic word they got back in 2017 about being debt-free still hasn't come true. They're still asking for money. Todd White is a great healer. He needs you to look the other way as he tells you about his 90 days of bed rest that the doctors ordered for him. Todd White needs you to send more money. How much is enough? That's for him to decide. And if you don't agree with him, well then just listen to his mentor, Kenneth Copeland. And I'm going to say this to you. You need to be putting your money in here. It, 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 it's proven good ground. Todd White's not new. <laughs> Do you hear me? Do you hear me? This is proven ministry. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be standing here talking to you. Anyway, I had some kind of some kind of virus come in, some, some kind, kind of virus, virus come virus. in, and it weakened the left ventricle side of my heart uh, because I'm a big advocate of working out, big advocate of cardio, exercise, and healthy eating, which I still am. But it caused my left side of my heart to get weak. And so the pumping capacity was at 20%. My heart is on the mend. It's actually better than it was. I'm only 60 days out from being fully released. If you're maybe on the fence about whether or not you think you should believe and follow people like Todd White, I want you to know that he copies his ideas from other people that he's listened to. He's not actually trained at all theologically. You may not think that matters, but it actually matters a great deal. But he listens to Bill Johnson and copies Bill Johnson. He copies Benny Hinn. He copies Kenneth Copeland. Kenneth Copeland has taught me so much. At exactly 12 noon. On the 29th day of March. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Come it's on, over. give God glory and praise and honor for this. It's, it's over. over. It's oh, over. it's over. Kenneth Copeland has taught me so much. I, I, you guys can think what you want. There's people that have said, I've had partners that are partners with Lifestyle. They're like, well, now that we know that you're in cahoots with this false prophet, we don't want to partner with you. I feel bad for you. I do. I don't, I don't need your partnership. And probably more than anybody, he's copied Dan Moeller. But whether you realize this or not, like Jesus paid a price to put who he is inside of every one of us. He didn't just pay a price to forgive you. He paid a price to transform you. But I want to show you some of the things that he said in brief about how everybody should be healed all the time. And the basic gist of it is that Jesus healed everybody all the time. We're supposed to be just like Jesus. We're supposed to have the exact same power as Jesus. Therefore, we should heal everybody all the time. In fact, the whole premise for lifestyle Christianity as an organization is that all the Christians for all of Christian history have not been doing it right. They're not living the normal Christian life. And what's the normal Christian life? Well, it's to see miracles all the time, every day. We pray for somebody, we lose them. God didn't hear our prayers, it wasn't God's will. Tell me that Jesus would have prayed for them and they, look, the problem is, is we've allowed unanswered prayers to determine God's will instead of the life of Jesus who was the will of God. So when it comes to healing, Jesus is our model. I don't care what you've been taught, it really, really, if it's outside of Jesus and the life of Jesus, I really, I, I, it doesn't matter. Because Jesus is perfect theology. And everyone he prayed for was healed. And I need to believe. Listen, I, I can tell you testimonies that make your head spin. Of people's arms growing out and legs growing back. I have no arms. I know arms. Of people's arms growing out and legs growing back. And eyes growing in their head. And eyes growing in their head. That would totally, totally rock your world multitudes would come and none of them walked away sick not one none mark chapter 6 4 to 5 jesus said to them a prophet is not without honor except in his own town among his relatives and in his own home he could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them 100 percent. everybody jesus prayed for 100 percent was healed completely 
We are growing in faith. We are moving from glory to glory. I pray for people, and there are people that I don't see healed. But if Jesus prayed for them, would there be? If Jesus prayed for them, would they have? Yes. So the answer isn't on God's end. It's me growing in faith. Would they be healed? We can't afford to say, but that was Jesus. We have to say this. I am growing as a son. I understand that Jesus is my model. When I pray for somebody and I don't get to see breakthrough, does that mean it wasn't God's will to heal them? There's where we mess it up right there. He does. So, so whenever you pray for somebody, you make sure that when Jesus prayed, it always happened, right? And sometimes we want to explain why it didn't or why it... We have to always let Jesus be our model. So if Jesus touched that ankle, would it be healed? Yes. No question. So he's the will of God. So we're growing in faith. You pray for somebody, and you have to believe that it's God's will for that to be restored. Or else maybe God didn't want it right now. If, if it wasn't in Jesus' mouth, we have to be careful to not have it be in ours. Just because like when, when I say, hey, well, maybe God's just waiting. Jesus never said it's never God's timing. Mm-hmm. He never said, hey, God's doing building character in you through this. Mm-hmm. He never said, I'd like to, but let me check God's will. Mm-hmm. Never. And he never said anything but be healed mm-hmm. every time. So that's our model all the time. Okay. So he's our model. Our goal was always full healing, yeah. 100% every time. Todd White has absolutely no idea what he's doing. He's making it up as he goes. And that's okay because he's got emotional background music. Can I get some keys? Deb, can you come up and play? Can I get some keys or something? Guys, someone help me. It's a keyboard behind me. Thank you, Jesus. Where's the keys? Help me, Jesus. Where'd they go? Oh my gosh. I love the Lord. Where's my worship team? Please help me. You guys. Can I have some keys? Mag Somebody? iemand op de keyboards? Can I get the worship team out here? Keys! Uh. I think you can see that Todd White is a really good speaker who knows how to work on the emotions of those in his audience. He really gives you the impression that he's hearing from God and working directly on behalf of God, but I don't think that's the case. What I want to show you now is some of the incongruities, some of the inconsistencies, some of the radical changes in a very short amount of time. Um, This is not what it looks like when God is working on behalf of a special new organization that's about to change the world like nobody has ever done before. What I want to show you is that Todd White honestly doesn't know what he's doing. Here's Todd White and then Tom Rotolo at the opening celebration night for the new facility, which took place on June 23rd of 2018 to pray over partners. God, thank you so much for everybody that would say yes and that would come up and step up to the plate and help us with this because we believe that this will be a debt-free building in Jesus' name. Amen. If you remember right, he said that they were going to be debt-free seven months earlier. He said that they would be debt-free in the next six months. On top of that, he made a big deal out of his close personal friend, Sean Baltz, who gave a prophetic word about how they were to acquire this land and these buildings, and they would do it debt-free. And if you don't know who Sean Baltz is, I've made other videos about him. I'll put a link to those videos in the description. Amen, amen. Hey, if you, you could be seated, but if you, would, if you want to uh, partner with... Okay, now I want to point out one really significant thing that Tom Rotolo said at this very same celebration day in June of 2018. He made it very clear that they were not starting a church. Let me just tell you, we are not, we are not planting a church here at this place. This is not, we're, as soon as we can, we're going to have the name. It's not going to be Harvest Church. It's not going to, it's going to be training. It's going to be something, it's going to be Lifestyle Christianity. It's going to be a training center uh, if you want to go to Todd White's church, you're not going to be able to because we're not, he does, not going to have a church. He's going to be going to Gateway. So it was made very clear in the middle of the year 2018 that Todd White was not going to be the pastor of a church. This was not a church at all. In fact, Todd White was being pastored by Robert Morris. And Robert Morris is very famous for being the pastor who gets people to spend lots of money at church. He's the guy that teaches you how you have to tithe, and if you don't, you're under a curse. 
Okay, let's skip ahead now to almost a year later and another fundraising plea from Todd White. Hey everybody, it's Todd White at Lifestyle Christianity. We're so thankful that you're watching this. Look, we are in a great time of need right now, a financial need. We need a miracle. We actually have a $250,000 challenge from a, from a foundation that actually said that they will match up to $250,000. So right now, we get double the seed sown up to a quarter of a million dollars, and we really, really need it. We have things that we have to accomplish, and one of those things is media. Media is one of the most important avenues that can touch many people, much more people than I can touch personally. Just for instance, the YouTube videos going from, you know, uh, just a few years ago in 2014, from 330,000 some views to over 100 million views in three years is absolute, it's a, it's astronomical. It's amazing. And so these people are being touched all over the planet. Everywhere I go, like I'm in airports, I'm in, gosh, everywhere. I'm meeting people that say, your videos have changed my life. And I know it's not me, but I know it's the revelation of identity because Christ is the one that changes lives. Right now, we, we really want to be able to do 100 simulcast power and love a month, which is way more than we can do because we can only be at one place at one time. So we can do one because there's so much involved in that. We're going to do about 12 a year. But imagine if we had the capability through equipment for media, that means camera equipment, all these different things that are necessary right now to provide quality filming for people. We want to make this the highest quality that we can. We want to touch as many people as we can in the shortest time that we can. So our heart is to multiply. It really is. So imagine being able to do 1,200 Power and Love schools a year rather than just doing 12. That right there is astronomical and totally amazing. We want to do a television show, an encounter show, but that's going to involve media again, and we need the equipment necessary. We need everything from microphones to LED screens to camera equipment to a boom camera. You name it, we need it right now. So in May of 2019, Todd White said they needed to buy tons of equipment. It looks like millions of dollars worth of equipment from what he's saying. That's the only way they could get a lot of views on YouTube. Now, I just took a screenshot recently, and you can see that Todd White's YouTube channel had 393,000 views in the last 30 days. You can also see that on a daily basis, Todd White gets somewhere between 12 and maybe 25,000 views per day. And on average, he's getting 34 new subscribers every day. That's what he's doing right now with tons of equipment, with a whole team of people and booms and cameras and LED screens and whatever all that stuff is. Now take a look at this. This is the statistics for Justin Peters Ministries YouTube channel. He has a lot less subscribers, but he has a lot more views over 500,000 views in the last 30 days. On a daily basis, he has, on a bad day, 6,600. On a good day, 38,000, 37,000, 15,000, 87,000. He's actually getting a lot more views on his website, and it's just him <laughs> talking to his laptop in his little bedroom office. And he's getting 167 subscribers per day. No giant cameras, booms, and LED screens. Speaking of the statistics on a YouTube channel, this is a screenshot I took from Todd White's statistics. I'm using this, the uh, Social Blade website. And you can see that, for some odd reason, Todd White lost 363,000 video views. Now, what that actually means is he had videos that had been seen that many times, and he removed them. Here's my guess at what happened, and it's a pretty good guess. Todd White had a video, uh, the title was, I believe, Jesus Became Sin on the Cross, something like that. It was a really, really bad video, and Justin Peters pointed out how horrible it was, how blasphemous it was, and he got a lot of views on that video, as he should. Todd White turned around and said, hmm, I think I'm going to take that video down. I'm also guessing that he took down the video of him being promoted by Kenneth Copeland at that same time. But somehow, he removed some of his videos, and he lost a lot of views in that process. Now, let's take a look at what Justin Peters said in his video, in this uh, Todd White video that was quickly removed. You know sin became sin. Jesus became bestiality on a tree. Bestiality. Jesus became bestiality on a tree. It gets worse. Jesus became sex trafficking on a tree. Oh my gosh! 
Jesus became every lustful thought on a tree. It's no joke, it's real. By the way, I made a copy of this video, of Todd White's video, because I knew after all of the views that Justin Peters was getting that they were probably going to remove it because they just looked really bad. But I have a copy. Okay, I kind of got ahead of myself chronologically there. Let's go back to 2019 and hear what Todd White was saying about their need for more money. We've been doing so much here at the building and it's been amazing. We've done so much renovation because the church that was in here did not have the funding in order to fix the things that were, that were wrong. And so they've kind of put band-aids on it to get by. But since we've moved in here, we have now 20 years of a building that hasn't been really fixed up. So just two years earlier, they said they were buying this building for $19 million. Are we to believe that they didn't have an inspection done? They had no idea what condition the building was in? They just bought it without even really looking at it? Don't you think it would have made a lot more sense to, right from the beginning, say, well, we're going to buy this building, it's going to cost this much, but we're going to have to put a lot more into it because it needs a lot of work. Now is the time to sew. Guys, our students have been completely transformed. We have so many testimonies. It has been absolutely ridiculously amazing. Now here's another fundraising video about three months later. Hey guys, it's Todd White with Lifestyle Christianity. We are inside the training center right now. Lives are being changed, people are being discipled, and this is the most amazing facility that I've ever had the chance to be able to be a part of. Help us with our vision, because God says where the vision is, provision is, and we need help. We're believing to be debt free. We're believing to be debt free. We came up with 5 million, put it down. We have 11.2 that we owe currently. Wait, what? They still owe 11.2 million? What the heck? What about the prophecy from Sean Boltz about the miracle gift and being debt free? Here's what Todd said two years earlier. I would like to not have bills each month to do this except for maintenance bills. And the prophecy that we had from an amazing man that I'm really close with. His name is Sean Bolt. He prophesied that a miracle gift was coming on the 36 acre campus. And we're believing that Jesus is gonna pay this thing off. No, Todd, I don't think you believe Jesus is gonna pay this thing off. It's this crowd of people that you continue to gather around yourself. They're the ones who are gonna foot the bill. And while all the little people beneath you are sending every little scrap of money they have left, you and your close personal false prophet friend Sean Boltz are doing just fine. Here's some information I gathered. This is from one of my other videos. This is from Sean Boltz's so-called ministry from 2017. Here is the page from their 990 that shows where the big bucks go. There's only two people making all the money. Sean Boltz and his wife, who show that they work 30 hours a week. How would you like to work 30 hours a week and uh, make a quarter of a million dollars a year? That's what it looks like when you tell people what they want to hear and pretend to be a prophet. Okay, here's some information I found from a website I have not used before. I want to show you what Lifestyle Christianity has provided in this Form 990. I don't understand exactly how organizations are required or not required to fill these out. But you can see they made a half a million in 2014. They made a lot more in 2015. And Todd White made almost $600,000. He actually made more than that because if you look at the details, he had an extra compensation. 2016, the income goes up again. And Todd White is making now 343000 Tom Rutolo is finally making some good money, 80000 2017, wow, look at that. Almost six and a half million total. And Todd's making actually less. Tom Rotolo's making a little bit more. Now here's the most recent numbers. This is what Lifestyle Christianity has reported. The most recent year is 2019, and they are they're saying nothing. They're not reporting anything. So we don't know how much money's being brought in or who's getting paid what. They call me a prosperity preacher. They call me a prosperity preacher. Todd 
Todd White appears to be accountable really to nobody. He hears from God, he changes his mind, he has a new plan, he cancels that plan when he hears from God the next week, and he starts with a new plan, he cancels that, he keeps changing his mind, he keeps hearing from God. This is not truly God that he's hearing. I don't know what's going on inside of his head. Here's what God was telling him in June of 2020. And so he said, I want you to have a church. And I was like, oh my gosh, look, I'm not ready for a church. And he said, but I want you to have a church the way that I want to teach you to have a church. And so for me, that gave me the green light. We are not planting a church. We're going to launch a church. We are not not planting planting a church. church. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to be all about community. It's going to be all about family. It's going to be all about the kids. So I believe that we can actually launch this church that is going to be so supernatural, so amazing, that is going to draw so many people that are hungry for more. Okay, to sum it up quick, honestly, what you're gonna, what you're gonna receive, what can you expect? I know one thing you can expect for sure, and that is emotionally manipulative background music. As far as the church goes, we we're I was trying to pray through, and and look, because all of our staff are full up, like everybody is. They all have enough on their plate. We have plenty on our plate. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, Lord, if we're going to launch a church, how, how am I going to do this? Like, I need a whole team for this. And like, all the team is full up. They already are completely overwhelmed with what they're doing. I'm kind of, I'm just thinking about it. And I'm like, I was at a loss. And then, and on my heart, I was talking to Gary, um, our VP, and we were just talking together. And I went, oh my gosh, what about Theo? And so Theo Koulianis has been a friend for quite some time and just a beautiful, beautiful man. His wife, Rachel, just beautiful people and their three beautiful kids. I prophesy three more on them, but they're just amazing. <laughs> so what, I'm, what, I'm, what I was like really thinking in my heart, oh my gosh, this is a total green light in my heart. Like we need to contact him just to see where he's at and what he would think about that. And so it was really neat because when we contacted him, it was at a very amazing place in his life to where he was asking God this certain question, like, what do you have for me? Like, where am I at? And Jesus went and opened the door the same day, like a couple couple hours later. That's our God. Okay, this looks so uh, emotional and so super spiritual and so meaningful. And yet, Lifestyle Christianity as a church already doesn't exist, and I have no idea what happened to Theo because I can't find him having any connection at all anymore. I saw a video of him most recently talking about being a school teacher. That's our king. He closes doors and opens them, and I just love it, and I just just love doing life with people that, that hear God's voice. If this is what it looks like, for people to hear God's voice, then God is the author of confusion. It actually is going to get worse. Let's keep going. So within just a year, the idea for this church completely fell apart, and they proudly announced that they were going to have the world's greatest church once again. This time it was going to be called Risen Nation, and it was a combination of lifestyle Christianity joining with Risen Nation, and it was going to be pastored by William Hinn. An amazing venture that we're stepping into. I am. It is pretty surreal. Really excited about this. It's going to be legendary. It's going to go down in history. It's going to be legendary. It's going to go down in history. It's going to be legendary. It's going to go down in history. It's going to shift the way that the body of Christ views what it means to actually do church. We are going to see miracles, signs, wonders, the prophetic words of knowledge. Uh, we're going to see the most outrageous miracles Amen. that DFW has ever seen, let yeah. alone the body of Christ has ever seen. We're going to go after this together, and Amen. it's going to be beautiful. By this point, I'm hoping that you won't be surprised to learn that the world's greatest church that they just described in June of 2021 is already over. He's already broken away from his little buddy here, William Hinn, And he made that announcement at the same time he announced that he was very sick. Welcome to the stage, uh, Todd, Todd White. Welcome to the stage, Todd White. (laughs) 
Wow. Amen. Thank you. Can you guys sit, please? Um, yeah, first, first things first. There's two separate things we want to talk about. Second thing we want to talk about is direction. First thing we want to talk about is why I haven't been here. All right. There's all kinds of speculation of why I haven't been here. Like I've been like something's wrong. Yeah, something's wrong. It's true. Um, I went to, we had a power and love in Nashville. How many of you, who came to that? That was absolutely nuts. It was crazy. But I started to feel this weird bloating in my body. Like, like I needed to do a cleanse or something. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm two days out from even being home. So that's not going to happen. So I'm like, I'm not going to eat that much. And so it got worse and then it got worse. And then I had trouble breathing. And so it was like, it felt like a bloating that was pushing on my lungs. And so I didn't know what it was. We were actually downtown because we went out on Friday night to take the microphone and go and share the gospel down. And it was awesome down there, but I couldn't breathe. I'd walk like five steps and have to stop. And I felt like something's really wrong. And Randy, my security was walking with Blake. They're like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know, dude, just let me take a break. And so the next two nights, it was really bad. So I went to the emergency room and the doctors told me that um, they need to admit me that I have water on my lungs, that it's probably double pneumonia. And so it was weird because I didn't have a fever or anything like that. And I'm like, okay, well, doesn't pneumonia involve this? And they said, well, we need to admit you. We're going to do some tests. So I, they did so many tests. I felt like a pin cushion. I, I can't even tell you how many times I got stuck with needles. I hate needles. So... It's not good when a nurse comes towards you and is so happy because your veins are good. Do you know what I'm saying? They're like, oh my gosh, that's great. I'm like, what is wrong with you people? My, my, my son-in-law is the same way. He's a nurse. He's like... I'm not a psychologist, but these little attempts at humor, these little jokes off to the side really seem to be a way for him to try to cover up for the fact that the great healer, the great miracle worker, is now very sick. But anyway, they did a bunch of tests, and they went and um, did heart tests, and they did an echocardiogram, whatever, and my heart was at 20% of the beating capacity that it was supposed to be. And so it's called, what's it called, infraction? What? Ejection fraction was it 20%. And so that's not good. The doctor said, I'm a time bomb waiting to die. And I'm like, guys, knock it off. You didn't bring Jesus to them. And they were like, you could die any second. You need to wear a life vest. You need to wear a defibrillator. And I'm like, what is happening? And so it all hit at once. And I was on like, I went from taking no medications to taking 11. Here's what Bill Johnson says to Todd White, the man who was obviously lacking in faith. The tragedy in this day is that we have many people filled with knowledge that cannot demonstrate what they know and what they believe. They cannot demonstrate what they know and what they believe. God's called us. When he gives us insight, he invites us to come to know the God of provision, the God of healing, the God of healing, the God of healing. The tragedy in this day cannot demonstrate the tragedy in this day cannot demonstrate what they know. Overnight. And I've always preached, eat well, exercise, and here I'm the one with the heart issue, right? So that's twisted. But they said that uh, a virus, possibly the one that we all know about, when I had last year around Christmas, weakened my left ventricle and, and, and knocked out my pumping capacity. Needless to say, all that is great medical information, but... It is a demonic attack. Wow, that was convenient. The guy who claims that miracles happen all the time, that he's living the normal Christian life, now gets very sick and conveniently blames it on the devil. Sounds like Todd White doesn't know his identity. Sounds like Todd White hasn't been listening to uh, Kenneth Copeland. You will receive your healing today. If you will receive it. Amen. I, I know. I just needed to let you know the whole, the doctors want me to inform you. <laughs> but I did. I went to taking all those meds. The last, I've been on rest. I'm on rest for 90 days. So I'm in 30 days in. It's the hardest thing I've ever done. I know what it's like to rest and be with the Lord, but I don't know what it's like to rest and just sit and do nothing. 
I like nothing. I can't ride my Can-Am. I can't go and train. I can't, uh, you have no idea. And the hardest part, I think, over the last 30 days is the mind fog and like reading. I can't, like when I start to read, I just fall asleep because they gave me medicines to, I know this is a lot of information, I'm sorry, but I figured y'all already know because I haven't been here. But I haven't felt well enough to be here. And I came in a couple times and just felt bad and I left because I can't focus. Like I, my focus was gone, but they changed two of my meds so I can focus. I got my brain back. No, 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 you don't understand. I got my brain back. Ask William. My brain was gone. Like serious, fell straight out. Anyway, oh, so I went from I went from twenty percent. So I got my I got my echo at thirty days in, and they said that I was at forty five percent, which is tremendous, amazing, miraculous. Notice how he slipped in the word miraculous. Does this sound like a miraculous healing, or does this sound like a guy who got sick just like everybody else went to the doctor? He carefully followed the doctor's instructions and is making a little bit of progress every day, just like everybody else. Next thing I want to talk about. Um, William and I have, have been doing life together pretty much for six years, and it has been really good. But the most important part of our life is connection. And I, I, when I say connection, I mean relationship. I mean Okay, I'm going to speed this up like crazy because he goes on and on and on. But the gist of it is they had some kind of a disagreement. Things weren't working out well somehow, and now they're splitting up. But now we realize that we are going to be more effective for the advancement of the kingdom being in two 501c3s. So the two organizations are splitting up because now God is telling them that's the right way to do it. Even though just seven months ago, they made these incredibly grandiose claims about what they were going to do once they merged together. An amazing venture that we're stepping into. I am. It is pretty surreal. Really excited about this. It's going to be legendary. It's going to go down in history. It's going to be legendary. It's going to go down in history. It's going to be legendary. It's going to go down in history. It's going to shift the way that the body of Christ views what it means to actually do church. We are going to see miracles, signs, wonders, the prophetic words of knowledge. Uh, we're going to see the most outrageous miracles Amen. that DFW has ever seen, let yeah. alone the body of Christ has ever seen. We're going to go after this together, and Amen. it's going to be beautiful. Hubris. Okay, now let's take a look at a brand new video from Lifestyle Christianity called Expand 22. And this is where they're going to tell you about all the great things that they have been doing so that you'll give more money so that they can do even more. We want to see America saved, but we need you guys to help partner. Please help us right now with this Expand 22. We really need help. We need you to sow now. Go to LifestyleChristianity.com, look for Expand 22, and sow your seed now. Over the last seven years, Lifestyle Christianity has grown and expanded from an evangelism ministry to becoming a home where we house weekly services, LCU ministry school, forerunners for the arts, and serves as a base for our Power and Love training conference. Each week we are reaching over 1.3 million individuals through our social media platforms and that number continues to grow daily. It's our vision to continue to create spirit-breathed content that is transforming the lives of every individual who comes across our channels. Through online viewership, over 212 million lives have been gripped by the simplicity of the gospel. These numbers, like just about everything else from Todd White, seem to be a tremendous exaggeration. Let's listen to that again. Each week we are reaching over 1.3 million individuals through our social media platforms. So they're telling us that they're reaching 1.3 million viewers each week. This is from January 14th. This is that Social Blade statistics site again. And you can see they've only reached 381,000 views for the entire month. And they're getting somewhere between 4,000 to 25,000 views per day. There's no way, and YouTube is the biggest platform. Facebook, I'm sure, is in second. 
But between both of those together, there's nowhere near 1.3 million people per week who are seeing their content. And that number continues to grow daily. It's our vision to continue to create spirit-breathed content that is transforming the lives of every individual who comes across our channels. Through online viewership, over 212 million lives have been gripped by the simplicity of the gospel. Okay, first of all, the simplicity of the gospel is not heard from Todd White. Todd White doesn't actually preach the true gospel. That's another story. I have a whole playlist full of videos about the bad theology and the bad teaching of Todd White. I will put that link uh, in the description of this video. But again, the numbers don't bear out anything that they're saying. They don't have that many viewers. They don't have that many views. If you have 50 million views, that would mean you have less than 50 million viewers. Because viewers watch more than one video. So if you had 50 million views, you would have, I don't know, maybe 10 million viewers or 5 million viewers. So they're claiming that 212 million lives have been dramatically touched by what they're doing online. And it's a wild exaggeration. Social Blade shows that they've had an impressive 51 million views for the entire YouTube channel. That's nothing like 212 million lives that have been changed. Go to socialblade.com, type in Todd White, and you'll see that these statistics are accurate. To further expand our online experience and reach, we need to upgrade our current equipment and facilities to host weekly online encounters. In order to bring our broadcasting up to date, it will cost $2 million to upgrade our studio and $1 million to replace seating in the auditorium. As many of you know, when we purchased our current facility, it had been neglected for over five years. As stewards of this house, it's our responsibility to maintain and upkeep God's gift to lifestyle Christianity. Our goal is to raise $7 million by January 8th. Will you join us today by planting a seed to propel the gospel in these unprecedented times? Todd White needs you to ignore everything you've seen in this video and just blindly trust everything he does and says. Oh, and uh, make that check out to Todd White Incorporated. Thank you. How do you grow? How did you grow so fast? Todd, you're only 11 years old in the Lord. I pursued God in my closet, man. I pursued God in the secret place. He delights in me. So what? I can look in the mirror and love myself. I'm a concordance. I pursued God, then God, then God, then God. Ah! <laughs>